Hello, great people. Pay attentively to this video. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Okay. The Secretary to the uh, conference, distinguished delegates, I will be very brief. There will be no padding. I wish Are you to getting the thank point? the President for this opportunity for re-engineering the Are you getting the, the point? I wish to go straight to say that the problem we have in this country is because we have suffering from mental slavery. Over 300 years ago, our parents sold our brothers and sisters into slavery. 300 years later, Reality. we are not different. Reality. We are still selling ourselves into slavery. There is no originality in this country. This is the root of the problem we have. Those days, the price for, us, uh, for the slaves were trinkets, beads, gunpowder, gin, thank you very much, and so on. The price today is foreign aid. The price today is political influence. The problem we have is not of our own making. And unless we address those... Pay attention very well. Listen very carefully. with the colonial masters is going to cause us more problems. If we look all around, look at the ceiling, there is nothing that is new, nothing indigenous in this hall. The country itself is not indigenous. Even the coup, we are blaming the military, even the coups that we have is not our own, of our own making. I believe there is the author of one of the books I have read in this conference who stated that the idea of a coup <coughs> was first suggested in one of the military conferences they attended in America. I will go straight to read, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, what the respected Ahaji Shehu Shagari has put in his book. And I ask every member here to get that book, because I know most members here have the book written by Clinton. But they have not Are you begin not to understand that Nigeria not is not book. for you? written by very well. And I'm going to quote what he has written. Quote, I was particularly struck by a conversation I had with a Greek professor attached to an international agency in Geneva. He told me this, his opinion of why West Europeans were supporting the rebellion against Nigeria. It was, he said, common among Westerners to sympathize with the underdog in any dispute, which in this case happens to be the Eastern Igbo. But what was even more important to the West was that Nigeria was a potential rival power in Africa, a force which had to be checked before it becomes a threat to Western European interests on the continent. The Biafran challenge, accordingly, provided a suitable opportunity to trim Nigeria's growing wings. He said that according to certain estimates, Nigeria was sitting on a keg of oil, which, given a suitable condition, would make it so rich in just 10 years, that is by 1978, that Nigeria would not require any aid from Europe. Indeed, Nigeria would be in a position to assist other African countries, especially the poorer ones, and thus undermine to one chance. an important basis on which European influence to one was chance. exercised over them. I underline that. Bugari's company He did Nigeria. not therefore think that Europe would stand idly by and watch Nigeria become to Africa what the United Nations had become to Western Europe. The rebel enclave, on the other hand, could be encouraged 
to become a rich but small and uh, manageable African country, which will still be dependent on the West, just as some small oil-rich Arab countries have been. Finally, finally, he assured me that whatever happens in the future, the West would never allow Nigeria to develop to a position where its wealth and power would threaten West European interests in Africa. Mr. Chairman, I don't need any comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, great people. All right. Great people, freedom fighters, lovers of freedom are great people all over the world. You are welcome once again on IPOB Rapture Media under the leadership of Mazin Nam Dioku Kano, where we always set the record straight. My name's all Mazi Oken Naokechuku, known as the Biafran franchise in Washineke. The general. I hope every one of you have listened. I hope you get it right. I hope you understood every single word that come out from this man's mouth. I am bringing you authentic information. I am bringing you what is happening in that contraption called Damini Buzu, Nigeria. Now you have you begin to understand that everything that comes from my mouth is a gospel. Everything that I speak is a gospel. I, I don't come to lie to our people. So that you must always lend me your ear and understand everything that is coming out from my mouth. You have listened to it. Nobody is a Nigeria. <laughs> you know, since I've been telling our people this, it's very, very important that you go back and listen to every word that come out from this man's mouth. Nobody is a Nigeria. Nobody is indigenous of Nigeria. Now, you see, that is one particular thing and I want you people to understand. But now let me go into the details of this information that got to my desk right now that I couldn't wait, but I have to do this video because we are consistency. That is our second name and that is something that I want you people to always understand whenever I come to your side. You see, I keep on saying this to our people. Don't die in what you don't know about. Don't even you try to die for something that you don't know how it was created. Are you listening to it? I keep on telling you people that Nigeria is a mainstream business of British people, an Arab world. But some of you don't want to even pay attention to what I'm saying. Now the elderly statement are telling you people, and I hope it will sink into your minds and understand that <laughs> Nigeria is not for you. Nigeria is not for you. That is a, a, a concocted and contraption where they bring ethnic groups, different religion, different uh, behavior, different culture, different way of life. They brought them together so that they will begin to kill each other. <clears throat> now you understand it. And I want you to also understand because this man said it according to the man. Because we bring always reality, uh, we bring always authentic, not concocted or fabricated lies. We we bring it to you, and then you will see it live, and then you will begin to believe. Because some of you people, you see, and then begin to believe. That is why I always try to make myself clear, so that you can be able to see, and then begin to believe. Now you he talk about also the the coup, the Igbo coup. Now you understand what I'm talking about, Igbo coup. He said, before that coup, it was already discussed in America. So they know or they knew about this before it happened. But I want you people to understand that that what so-called Igbo coup was to restore West, to restore Yoruba land, to restore what? Yoruba land. That was what they call Igbo coup. It wasn't Igbo coup. But the, the, those people during that time tried to help the Yoruba Odudua. To restore their land so that they will not take over full and Alamaji magic can never run over their lands because they have already taken some by then go and make your research i don't want to call names but you understand what i'm talking about and again he mentioned according to what he called his name 
uh, the man that he mentioned his name, I have forgotten his name. He said, after the war, 1978, he said that if they want Nigeria to be built or for people to believe in Nigeria, that they should stop taking aid from foreign land. They should stop depending on foreign people. But because of the hands of British, because of what British people are doing, they don't want them to get themselves. But I want to shock you. I want to give you a little bit, you know, what really happened. They know that Biafra, they know that Biafra are the roots of Africa. They know that if Africa, if European, I mean to say, can allow Biafra to start, that means that Africa will be free. And the British people with their cohort have already understood the power that lies on Biafran people. That is why they are doing all these things today. Now I hope you get a point. This is what I have for you all. And go back again and listen more so that you will get a point. You will understand what I'm talking about. We have come and Biafra must come in our time. Biafra must come. You are welcome to Bugari's company in Nigeria. Fulani are running over your land. You know, whenever I'm telling you that Nigeria, there's nobody is an indigenous or Nigeria is not a, nobody is a Nigerian. It's a, just a concocted, fabricated, and everything about Nigeria is a fraudulent. Nigeria was built on fraud. The foundation of Nigeria is a fraud. That is why you see all these shenanigans today. People are trooping from Sahel, Senegambia, Chad, Niger, Mali to take over the properties that did not belong to them. That to show you that Nigeria is no Nigeria is not for anybody. So don't die for something that you don't even know who created it. It's British people that created Nigeria. Don't you even know about that? I hope you heard the story. And I hope you get it. <laughs> Good day and welcome.